Hey everybody, it's Shorik. Welcome back to Portugal and Beyond. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. If you're returning, thank you very much for the support. I do appreciate that. If you're new, please consider subscribing for more information about Portugal, what it's like to live here, move here, not being Portuguese, being American, as well as European travel and travel news as I get it. I try to also give that to you as well. Today, I just want to give you some video and some photos of a recent trip that we took to the Batalha Monastery. And with many of my videos, when I talk about Lisbon or Portugal, I try to start with a map. So let's get to the map to show you where it is. So the Batalha, uh, which is a district of Lyria, is north of Lisbon. And you can see here, it's easy to get to. If you have a rental car, if you're coming down from Porto too, you, you can get to it. There are many buses that go here and specifically for this monastery. So you wouldn't have a hard time catching a bus to and from depending on where you're uh, in Portugal. So the major piece here is this, this amazing Gothic monastery. As you're walking around the exterior, Often every 15 or 20 steps, I had to kind of stop and look back or look forward and get a different perspective. There's so much going on with the buttresses and how intricate the exterior artwork is. You really have to kind of take your time as you're walking around. It was built or erected in commemoration of the 1385 Battle of Ajubarota. So it's very important to the Portuguese people. And I will say it's so important that King John or King Joao, King John for English, and his wife, Philippa of Lancaster, are buried here. Uh, they're entombed here. So it is something that's just very important to the Portuguese people and culture. As you go inside, it's got the, the typical narrow shape uh, with the very tall ceilings. The crypt area where uh, King John and Philippa and uh, some of their kids are buried, also uh, very intimate. The stained glass windows I want to point out, I did not take many photos or videos of them, but each one of them you could stare at for several minutes because they could all tell a story or a different story about what was going on at that time. Just so beautiful. Didn't necessarily get the sunniest of days inside, but I can only imagine how colorful the inside of the monastery looks like when you have a, a beautifully sunny day uh, and the, that color coming into the crypt, but also the main uh, monastery church area. There's a beautiful courtyard here too that they seem to do a good job of, of keeping up and manicuring. You can kind of imagine what the cloisters, what, what this would be like to walk through in the 1400s in the 1500s. It's it's pretty magical because you, you think you're stepping onto a movie set. It's so beautiful. For my money, what I think is the coolest part of this complex are the unfinished chapels. So you have the finished area and then you're able to go into a side uh, area that you get to walk around what, what could have been. But most of it is completed with the exception of a roof. And you just, that's where I overuse the term ornate and intricate when I think of architecture because I just don't know other terms. But as you can see here, the doorways, all the layering that goes on or the, the framing, uh, the spires kind of leading up to what would be the, the roof, uh, the columns. There's so much there that you just need to go in the middle and probably just look at each one of them and take it all in because... Uh, again, there's more st storytelling. There's much more going on there than what you may realize at first glance. So really take your time. To go to this venue, you probably need about 30 to 45 minutes. I would say probably closer to 45 minutes because I think you need to walk around the perimeter to begin with, get your ticket, go inside, check out the main church area, the uh, side area where... Uh, King John and Philippa are entombed, as well as their children. Henry the Navigator, which is one of the uh, main, uh, up there with Vasco da Gama and Magellan, one of their kids, uh, is buried there in that side uh, cloister with them. 
then doing the walking through the rest of the complex, seeing the garden area, uh, the outdoor, uh, pretty magical. Again, just looking at all the columns and, and just taking it all in. And then lastly, but I think most importantly, the unfinished chapels. Of That to me, in, in most cases with people I, I've been with, that's what the lasting memory is of, of thinking about that particular area because it's, it's pretty amazing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As we get around to more places in Portugal that aren't necessarily top two or five of TripAdvisor or other places, I want to make sure that I'm trying to do videos not just of the most popular, but maybe some of the more hidden or not as often traveled to that you may consider going to as an option when you're coming here to visit or if you're living here and you need a day trip or a weekend trip someplace. So thank you so much for watching and as always, enjoy your travels. Hey, thanks so much for watching the full video. If you get a chance, and if you're interested in reading some crazy workplace stories, please check out my two books, Magnet of Badness, Volume 1 and Volume 2, both available on Amazon in ebook or soft cover. If you want to make fun of me, there's plenty of stories where you can do that. If you want to make yourself feel better about the job that you're in, It'll make you feel better too. But uh, crazy stuff that happened over 30 years, you won't believe it until you read it. So thank you so much for watching. And if you get a chance, pick up a copy of one of these on Amazon. Thank you so much.